Welcome back to another, or to this week's episode of updates and news and patches and everything for video games. We are back with week 33, uh, which spans basically August, August 12th through the 18th, um, and it is Friday the 16th, and I decided to do it now so where all the updates can come out Monday through Friday morning and we can just actually do a full week's worth in here and uh, yeah so today we have one two three four games that we're going to be covering uh, starting off with the massive update and hot fixes for world of warcraft we have news or we have uh yeah we have news on the phasmophobia update and changes coming to the game we have information on the Fortnite Chapter 5 Season 4 uh, from new returning and vaulted weapons. We also have information on the Battle Pass and ongoing content going there. And then we also have information on Overwatch. So we'll be going through all that in this video. Um, however, Call of Duty is the only one that's kind of missing from this. And that is because it is currently week 4 of Season 5 in Call of Duty. And that is literally just one week before week five which is their uh, mid-season drop so they typically don't release any uh, big patches or updates or anything that's of concern for week four um, we'll have a mid-season patch next week and it's likely to be very big as there's a lot of content coming to it but again we will talk about that next week however we're going to start off like we do every episode with world of warcraft and again if you're not if you're looking for a specific game, whether in this video, sorry. So if you're looking to, for only World of Warcraft or Fortnite or Phasmophobia or Overwatch, uh, you can use the scroll bar down below. It will indicate the beginning sections of each point in the game. Um, so, or you can check the description for timestamps for when Over Overwatch will come up or when Fortnite's set to come up, Phasmophobia or World of Warcraft. So if there's a specific game that you just want to listen to and you don't care about the rest check the description down below um, so with that said thanks so much for tuning into this week's episode of video game updates and news let's get into this and as always don't forget to click the like and subscribe button stay up to date with all things to guys my game pad let's get after it and let's check out the first game which is world of warcraft all right and as promised we are starting off with World of Warcraft. Um, this is a very, very, very big section, hefty section, hefty update, and hot fixes. As we are, what, 10 days out from the recording of this from World of Warcraft The War Within debuting. And if you pre ordered it, you get early access starting August 22nd, which is here in like six days. Uh, so I'm excited for it. As I've mentioned many, many times, both through this, through my own personal stream, and through other episodes, I am so freaking ecstatic for this game. I, or this DLC, I can't wait for it to come out. Lots of changes are coming. And it's going to be an amazing story arc. So, uh, first up, we have the 11.0.2 update, which is officially now live as of August 13th. And, and I'm telling you, this is a this is huge, huge update. Uh, it's going to take a while. So, But there's four points of uh topics we need to cover classes player versus player items and user interface accessibilities um we'll touch briefly on that last one as if it's not critical or crucial it's really not you know needed to know i guess but we'll see things change as we read this law so let's start off with the world of warcraft classes all right first up we have death knights and there's there's a a ton of updates again very very long segment of this episode so death knight death strike can now only heal the death knight for a percentage of damage taken from any given damage event once death strikes that heal the minimum amount of damage or minimum amount do not count as using damage events in this way unholy strength ruin of the fallen crusader now he heals for four percent maximum health it was six so it's a decrease um enfeeble reduces damage dealt to you by 12 percent was 15 
No magic reduces magic damage taken by 8 was 10. An issue causing Rise Abomination to deal less damage than it should has now been fixed. Kind of sounds like Death Knights as a whole kind of got uh, nerfed a little bit. Uh, the Blood Death Knights. All damage increased by 10%. A new aura called Coagulating Blood shows the amount of recent da taken damage that will be used to calculate the value of your next death strike. The aura description lists the value as a flat amount and the number of stacks shows it as a percentage of your current health. Blood Shield's cap is now 50% of the Death Knight's maximum health. It was 100. The cap is no longer temporarily increased by Vampiric Blood. Bone Shield increases armor by 100% of strength. It was 80, so that's, a, that's the first buff for a Death Knight. Uh, Leeching Strike now heals for 0.25% of maximum health for each target hit. It was 0.5. Uh, Dance, Dancing Ruin weapon increases parry chances by 35% down from 40 percent each active dancing ruin weapon generates three runic powers when mirroring heart strike it was five another uh, decrease everlasting bond increases dancing ruins weapon duration by six seconds down from eight seconds blood drinker access the damage the enemy dealt to you by 15 percent down from 20 percent bone storm damage increased by 20 percent Bone Storm heals you for 2% of your maximum health, which is down from 3%, up to the maximum of 10%, which is also down from 15%. Bone Storm now consumes up to 5 Bone Shield Charges. It was 10, so it's down from 10. Bone Storm now lasts 2 seconds per Bone Shield Charge spent, up from 1 second. Consumption's Blood Plague damage occurs 30% more quickly was 50%, so it's down from 50. The duration reduced to 6 seconds, down from 8 seconds. Rapid de Decomposition, Blood, Plague, and Death and Decay now deals damage 15% faster, down from 18%. Uh, Coagulopathy, I'm sure I butchered that one, now increases Blood Plague damage by 25% per stack, down from 30. Alright, and then for the Frost Death Knight, all ability damages have been reduced by 5%. Glacial advantage damage reduced by 15. Icy death torrent damage reduced by 15. Frost strike damage increased by 8%. Obliterate damage is increased by 8%. Breath of Syndragosa damage increased by 12%. Shatter frost now deals 60% of damage to nearby enemy down from 65. Enduring strength now grants 15% strength was 20, so it's down for 20%. Shattering Blade now causes the next Frost Strike when consuming 5 Razor Ice stacks to be increased by 115%, down from 125%. Glacial Advantage, or sorry, Glacial Advanced Global Cooldown is now properly reduced by Haste. Frost Sight's Global Cooldown is now properly reduced by Haste as well. Cryogenic Chamber now has a 30, 30 second duration. Uh, cryogenic chamber now resets at the beginning of a raid encounter in Mythic Plus Dungeon. Cryogenic chamber now displays the amount of damage event it stores as stacks. Icy torrents now deal reduced damage beyond five targets, down from eight. The tooltip will be updated to reflect this change at a later date. Uh, Pillar of Frost is now displayed on the personal resource display. And then lastly for the Death Knights, the Unholy Death Knight, all ability damage reduced by 10%, Clawing Shadow Damage increased by 25%, Evan Fever now increases damage to disease dealt, or deal, let me restart that, Evan Fever now increases damage diseases deal by 12% down from 15 Bursting Sores now increase Festering Wound damage by 16% down from 20 Bursting Sore damage reduced by 8%, Super Strain now applies Blood Plague and Frost Fever at 75% down from 80%. Rise Abomination now costs 1 Ruin to summon, and an issue with Unholy Blight applying a Virulent Plague to the player's current target instead of enemies in proximity has now been resolved. Uh, for Demon Hunters, Live by the Glaive now restores 2% of maximum health. It's down from 4%. Havoc 
Demon Hunters, all ability damage increased by 13%, Eye Beam damage increased by 100%, Consuming Lesser Soul Fragments now heals for 6% maximum health, which is down from 10, and a Fire Inside chance to refund a charge of an Immolation Aura increased to 30%, up from 25 Vengeance Demon Hunters, all ability damage increased by 15%, Thick Skin increases Stamina by 60%, down from 65. Demonic Wards reduce Physical and Magic Damage taken by 8%, down from 10. Soul Cleave Healing reduces by 20%. Uh, Frailty Heals for 8% of Damage Done, down from 10. Void Reaver reduces Damage you take from Targets Afflicted by uh, Frailty by 3%, which is down from 4. Illuminating Sigils grants 12% parry chance, down from 15. Down in Flames reduce Fiery Brand, cooldown by 12 seconds, down from 15. Metamorphous increase maximum health by 40%, down from 50%. Dark Glareth Boom now refreshes 15-30% to of Fell Devastation cooldown, was 20-40%. to So it's down from, it went down. And refunds 15-30 to Fury which is down from 20 to 40 fury um, and for druids we have a pretty hefty one here all right starting off druids regrowth initial heal increased by 27 percent and its healing over time decreased by three percent swift men healing increased by 38 percent iron fjord increases armor by 112 percent of agility down from 120 percent and then we have uh, for balance, for yeah, balance druids, all damage spells increased by six percent. Force of nature melee damage increased by sixty percent. Wild mushroom damage increased by twenty percent, and it gener generates up to twenty astral powers, which is up from sixteen. Umbral ins inspiration damage bonus increases to thirty-five percent, up from thirty. Denzen of the Dream damage reduced by 6.5%. Denzen of the Dream's attacks are now affected by all abilities that increase all your spell damage or critical strike chances. Astral communicate, uh, Communion grants 25 Astral Powers, which is up from 20. Wraith, and Star, Wraith or Starfire sorry, casts with Umbral Embrace are now affected by both passive bonuses from Mastery Astral in, uh, Invocation. Wraths cast by Convo, the spirit, can now trigger Umbral Embrace and Astral Smolder. If a player has a free cast available from Touch of the Cosmos or Touch the Cosmos and Star Weaver, only the bonus from Star Weaver is consumed on the next cast. Touch of the Cosmos now highlights Starfall and Star Surge when your next cast will be free. Feral Druids. Melee auto attack damage increased by 30%. Rip damage increased by 15%. Break initial damage increased by 30%. And periodic damage increased by 5%. Shred initial damage increased by 30%. Swipe initial damage increased by 30%. Brutal slash increase or initial damage increased by 30%. Thrash initial damage increased by 30%. And periodic damage increased by 5%. Lunar Inspiration Moonfall initial damage increased by 30%. Primal Wrath. Direct damage increased by 20%. Adaptive Swarm direct damage increased by 20%. Rampage Ferocity damage increased by up to 100%, up from 50, which was 50%, so it's up from 50%. When players spend extra energy on Ferocious Bite, Taste for Blood increased Ferocious Bite damage by 12%, which is down from 15, and an additional 12% during Tiger Fury, which is also down from 15. Apex Predator chance to proc against multiple targets increased slightly. Berserk damage now increases all ability and auto attack damage by 15%, up from 10%. Berserk Frenzy now causes enemies to bleed for 150% of all direct damage dealt by combo points generating ability was 135%, so it went up to a 150 from 135. Incarnation reduces the energy cost of all abilities by 25%, what it's up from 20%. Ashamane Guidance effect now lasts 40 seconds after Incarnation ends, was 30 seconds. Uh, Savage Fury increases your haste by 10%, up from 8%, and Energy Recover Rate by 25%, up from 20 
Guardian Druids, melee auto attack and all bear ability damage increased by 20%. Moon fire damage reduced by 5, 15%, sorry. Moon, dam, moon fire damage reduced by 15%. Twin moon fire increased moon fire damage by 8%, down from 10%. Reinvigation, reinvigoration, there we go, reduces frenzy regeneration cooldown by 10 slash 20%, was 20 slash 40%. Earth Warden reduces damage taken by 25%, down from 30%. Survival of the Fittest reduces cooldown by 12 slash 24%, which is down from 15 slash 15 30%. Tooth and Claw reduces damage taken by 12%, down from 15 After the Wildfire triggers, after spending 300 Rage, was 200%, or 200, sorry. Your Six Fury grants a shield equal to 25% of Thrash and Maul damage. Down from 45. A Loon's Favor heals you for 25% of Arcane damage dealt. Down from 40. Rage's Sleeper Duration reduced to 8 seconds. Down from 10 seconds. Reduces Sleeper Damage Taken. Reduction reduced to 20%. Down from 25%. Reduces Sleeper Leech decreases to 20%. Down from 25. Pulverized Damage reduced to 8 seconds. Down from 10 seconds. Your Sick Guidance. Reduce the cooldown of Incarnation Guardian of Yursik by 1 second for each 25 Rage spent, up from 20. Frenzy Regeneration heals you for 20% of your maximum health, down from 32%. Dream of Cineris, uh, there we go. Dreams of Cineris increases the healing of affected regrowth by 130%, down from 200%. They fixed an issue with the increase to the amount of rage required to trigger after the wildfire. All right. Last up for Druid is the Restoration Druid. Life Bloom heals over time, increased by 5%, and Bloom heals healing increased by 30%. Tranquility heals increased by 15%. Rejuvenation healing increased by 15%. Rejuvenation now costs 2.1% base mana. Down from 2.2%. Wild Growth Healing increased by 50%. Cineron Ward heal, Healing increased by 20%. Embrace of the Dream Healing increased by 50%. Nourish increase, nourish Healing increased by 100%. Grove of Guardian Nourish and Wild Growth Healing decreased by 10%. Convoke the Spirits now cast an additional full, four spells over the duration of Restoration Druids. Flourish duration is now 8 seconds, up from 6 seconds. Regenesis now increases the healing of rejuvenation by up to 15-30%, which is up from 10-20%. to 10-20%, sorry. Power of the Arc Druid now has a 60% chance to activate. It's up from 40%. Tree of Life now increases healing done by 10% up, or sorry, Tree of Life now increases healing done by 10%, which is down from 15%, and increases the healing of rejuvenation by 40%, also down from 50%. Rip damage decreased by 15% does not affect PvP, player versus player, combat. Rape damage decreased by 15%, shred damage decreased by 15%, ferocious bite damage decreased by 15%, not, does not affect PvP combat. Sunfire damage decreased by 15% and fixed an issue that caused mastery harmony to gain an extra stack of all targets. Oh my god, there's like we're not even halfway through by the way. <clears throat> Just so you know. Evoker disintegrate damage increased by 10%. Fire breath damage also increased by 10%. Uh, Azure Strike damage increased by 10%. Deep breath damage increased by 10%. Verdant Verdant. Embrace healing increased by 20% and living flame in healing increased by 30%. Uh, the augmentation evokers black attunement increases the maximum health of you and four nearby allies by 2%, down from 4%. Aspects favor increased black attunement by 1% max health per talent point invested, down from 2%. Ebon might increases primary stat by 5%, down from 6.5%. And close as clutchmates has been removed. Devastation Invokers, Eternity Surge damage increased by 26.5%. Pyre damage increased by 10%. Shattering Star damage increased by 10%. Un 
Gravel damage increased by 10%. Firestorm damage increased by 10%. Animosity causes empower spells to decrease the duration of Dragon Rage by 5 seconds, up from 4 seconds, up to a max of 20 seconds, up from 16 seconds. Titanic Wrath is now a 1 point node, was 2. Eminent Destruction is no longer a capstone talent and has swapped positions with Feed the Flames. Preservation Evokers. Uh, Spirit Bloom healing increased by 20%. Reversion will now extend its duration by 30% when it's refreshed. Emerald Blossom and Echo Cast will no longer consume Essence Burst when they are released from stasis. Life Bind will now trigger its healing from heals that are considered procs. Lastly, Fields of Dream procs will no longer incorrectly benefit from Titan's Gift. Hunters. Let's see. Rejuvenation Wind now heals 12% maximum health over its duration, down for 20%. An issue with Ghillie Suit not activating when uncovered by Flare effect has been resolved. Uh, the Beast Mastery Hunters. Pet melee damage reduced by 10%. Laceration damage reduced to 8%, down from 15%. Kill command damage reduced by 20%. Hunt masters, call Haiti and Fenrir attack damage reduced by 33%. Dire beast damage reduced by 10%. Smack damage reduced by 10%. Stomp damage also reduced by 10%. Barbed shot damage reduced by 25%. Laceration now has a proper support attribution. They fix an issue with territorial instinct summoning a extra pet when talented into animal companion. They also fixed an issue that was causing laceration to contribute 100% of pet critical damage instead of 8%. Marksman, hun, marks, marksmanship hunter, there we go. Wind arrow now fires after you cast aim shot rather than during their cast. Many issues with wind arrow failing to fire or breaking have been resolved. Rapid fire cooldown between procs of wind arrow has been reduced to 0.7 seconds down from 0.7 seconds. Survival Hunters, uh, Grenade Juggler has been updated. Casting Explosive Shot reduces the cooldown of Wildfire Bomb by two seconds. Grenade Juggler and Sulfur Line Pockets procs will no longer grant the cooldown reduction effect. Bombar um, Bombardier is no longer consumed by Sulfur Line Pockets or Grenade Juggler procs. Wildfire Bomb Damage reduced by 5%. Flanking Strike damage reduced by 40%. Flanking Strike and Harpoon will now pull you to the edge of your target's hitbox rather than the center. Wild Bomb initial damage. Wild Fire Bomb's initial damage dealt to primary targets increased to 80%. Was 40%. A Wild Fire Bomb damage reduced by 25%. Raptor Strike damage increased by 5%. Mongoose Bite damage increased by 5%. Uh, flanking strike damage increased by 10%. Explosive shot damage reduced by 5%. They fixed an issue preventing flanking strike pet damage from scaling the hunter's attack power. They also fixed an issue preventing a flanking strike and kill command from scaling the hunter's mastery. Uh, next up we have the mage. Reabsorption now heals for 3% maximum health, down from 5%. Cryo freeze now causes ice blocks to heal 25-50% of maximum health over duration down from 40 slash 80 percent mass barrier now has a cooldown of three minutes up from two minutes okay. we have arcane mages clear casting is now learned at level 10 instead of 11 mastery savants arcane barrage damage bonus increased by 100 percent mastery savants arcane blast damage bonus increased by 50 percent um, arcane blast damage increased by four percent arcane missile damage increased by 11 percent uh, arcane barrage damage reduced by 60%. Arcane barrage damage increased per arcane charge increased to 90% was 30%. Arcane familiar damage increased by 50%. Arcane orb dam damage reduced by 10%. Arcane echo damage increased by 25%. Arcane echo now has a 0.2 second cooldown between procs. High voltage at, or sorry. High voltage base chance decreased to 10%, down from 20%. High voltage proc chance increases per failure increased to 10%, was 5%. Ether attunement damage bonus decreased to 100% on primary target and 50% on secondary target. 
It was 150 and 100, respectfully. Concentration now procs three times per minute, up from two. Mag uh, Magi's Spark now has a two second grace period after initial arcane missile procs, where the caster will continue to echo arcane missile damage. Fix an issue where Magi Spark damage echoes windows from Arcane's Missile and Arcane Barrage where shooters are shorter than Torch of the Magi's duration. Fix an issue that was allowing procs such as Orb Barrage and Energy Reconstitution to generate clear casting. They also fix an issue preventing Energized Familiar from granting mana. Oh, there's so much. Fire Mage, Pyro Blast damage increased by 5%, Phoenix Flame damage increased by 10%, Fireball damage increased by 20%, Scorch damage Scorch damage increased by 25%, Improved Scorch now increased damage taken by 7% up from 6%, Flame Strike damage increased by 10%, Quick Flame Strike damage bonus increased to 25% up from 20%, Flame Patch net damage increased by 30%, Lot Living Bomb damage increased, oh sorry, Living Bomb damage decrease by 63 percent living bomb is now target capped at eight targets and no longer splashes living bomb visual effects now have been reduced visually fidelity in ray groups light fuse or lit fuse chance to trigger reduced by four percent down from 15 percent explosive ingenuity chance to trigger reduced to three percent was ten percent explosive o's living bomb bomb trigger chance duration combustion is reduced to 15% down from 30%. Explosivos living bomb damage increased during combustion reduced to 40% down from 50%. Deep impact cooldown reduction reduced 10, 10 seconds down from 15 seconds. There's so much. There's so much. Ice lands, ice, I'm oh, sorry, frost mages. Ice Lance damage decreased by 10%. While glacial Spike damage increased by 10%. Flurry damage increased by 12%. Blizzard damage increased by 50%. Frozen Orb damage increased by 10%. Comet Storm damage increased by 10%. Ray of Frost damage increased by 20%. Splintering Ray's Ray of Frost damage bonus increased to 30%. Splitting Ice, Ice Lance damage to nearby enemies increased to 90%. Cone of cold damage is increased by 100. Death's chill now stacks up to 15 times. Death's chill spent spell damage bonus decreased to 1%. Time anomaly now grants a temporary water element when it procs icy veins. Refreshing icy vein no longer breaks fractured frost, slick ice, death chill, or thermal void for the duration of its refresh icy veins. Cryopathy oh, and splintering rays are no longer a choice node. The location of nodes in gate three have been adjusted. We're almost halfway. Onto the monks. Healing elixir now heals for 10% of maximum health. Yulin's grace grants an absorb equal to 1% of your maximum health every three seconds. Healing ward restores 10% of your maximum health. Clash is now one minute cooldown. Uh, for Brewmaster Monks, Mastery Elusive Brawler chance to dodge reduced by 12%. All ability damage increased by 15%. Brewmaster's balance increased armor by 45%. Celestial Fortune heals you for 70% of the amount healed. Amount of damage staggered increased by 5%. Percentage of magic damage staggered increased to 58%. Dance of the Wind chance to dodge reduced to 5%. Staggering Strikes heals reduced by 28%. Spirit of the Ox chance to summon a healing sphere, reduced by 40%. Elixir of Determination healing reduced to 30% of recently purified damage was 50%. Or a minimum of 8% of your maximum health. Celestial Brew healing reduced by 10%. Pretense of Instability grants 10% dodge. Dance the wind chance to dodge reduced to 5%. Detox now costs 10 energy. Chai wave. Yeah, chai wave damage reduced by 10%. And chai burst damage reduced by 10% as well. For Miss Weaver Hawks, Vavai healing increased by 50%, 56%. Revival healing, healing increased by 15%. Restoral healing. 
sorry, a slur, restoral healing increased by 15%, gusts of mist healing increased by 10%, overflowing mist now heals for 0.6% slash 1.2% maximum health, life cocoon absorbs amount reduced by 40%, Art, uh, ancient teachings now transfers 170% of damage to healing, hair of mourning, tear of mourning now causes 12% of enveloping mist, healing to transfer to allies with renewing mist and increases Vivai, Vivai healing by 10%. Jade Bond now increases the mastery healing life from Shaiji by 60%. Jade Bond now decreases the cooldown of Shaiji by 0.5 seconds and increases the healing of Yulon's soothing breath by 500%. Yulon's whisper healing increased by 30%. Yulon's grace now absorbs 1% heal, health it may stack up to 10% max health. They fix an issue causing Revival to dispel stacks of a debuff rather than the entire debuff. The location of Invigorating Mist and Healing Elixirs have been swapped. Lastly, for Windwalker Monks, they got a big one. Uh, blackout Kick damage reduced by 8%. Tiger Bomb damage. Tiger Palm damage reduced by 8%, Rising Sun Kick damage reduced by 8%, Fists of Fury damage reduced by 8%, Spinning Crane, crane Kick damage increased by 13%, Rushing Jade Wind damage increased by 20 Thunder Fist damage reduced by 8 Strike of the Wind Lord damage reduced by 8 Whirling Dragon Punch Area of Effect damage reduced by 8%, Dueling Threat damage reduced by 8%, Chai Burst damage decreased by 20%, Chai Wave damage increased by 80%, Chai Burst activation effect can now stack up to two times and duration has been increased to 30 seconds. Uh, Yulon's, Yulon's Grace now absorbs 0.6 health and may stack up to 6% of max health. Detox now costs 10 energy. Touch of the Dragon now increases the damage of Tiger Palm by 40%. Hardened Souls now increases the critical strike chance of Blackout Kick by 10%. Communion with the Wind now increases the damage of Strike of the when lowered by 100%. Memory of the Monastery now increases Tiger Palm's chance to activate Blackout Kick by 25%. Uh, Zen's Bond now increases Zen's damage by 30%. Brawler's Intensity now increases Blackout Kick damage by 12%. Crane Vortex now increases the damage of Spinning Crane Kick by 30%. Uh, Meridian Strikes now reduces the cooldown of Touch of Death by 6 or 0.6%. When combo strikes is activated, darting hurricane trigger rate has been doubled. Martial mixture now increases the damage of tiger palm by eight percent per stack, but now, or sorry, but can stack up to thirty times. Rising star now increases rising sun's kick damage by fifteen percent. The duration of fury of zin's stacking buff has been increased to thirty seconds. Whirling Dragon Punch now has a slight grace period where it will remain unusable, or sorry, it where it will remain usable when Rising Sun Kick or Fist of Fury complete their cooldown. Uh, they fix an issue that caused Chai, uh, Chi to drop below Combat Wisdom Threshold at the start of the raid. I just realized I've been saying that as Chai and not Chi. What a dumbass. Uh, fix an issue that caused uh, Ferociousness, Ferociousness, to not grant its increased effect by Furious Zen's procs. Fix an issue that caused Rushing Jade's wind duration to be longer than intended. Fix an issue that caused Martial Mixture to be consumed by Fists of Fury. But halfway, it looks like. Onto the Paladins. Light Forge Blessing now affects two additional allies. Flash of Light healing increased by 20%. Seal of the Crusader healing increased by 50%. Shield of the Righteous increases your armor by 160% of your strength. Uh, the Dusk buff from the Dusk buff from Of Dusk and Dawn reduces your damage taken by 4%. Um, Sanctified Plates armor increase no longer applies to bonus armor from Shields of Righteousness. And then for Holy Paladins. Holy light increase it, or holy light healing decrease by 28%. Holy shock healing decrease by 8% and damage decrease by 10%. Ward of glory healing decrease by 5. 
5%, Light of Dawn healing decreased by 5%, Flash of the Light healing decreased by 5%, Hammer of Wrath damage decreased by 10%, Crusader Strike damage increased by 75%, right, Shield of the Righteous damage increased by 25%, Liberation effect increased by 50%, Judgment damage decreased by 10%, Consecration damage decreased by 10%, Holy Prism healing and damage decreased by 10%, Barrier of Faith initial healing decreased by 10%, uh, Truth prevails, Merciful Auroras, Touch of Light healing, all decreased by 10%. Uh, Judgment of the Light healing decreased by 10%. Imbued Fusion now reduced the cooldown of Holy Shock by one second. Righteous Judgment now has a 50% chance to create Consecration. Blessing of the Dawn now increases the damage and healing of Holy Power Spenders by 5% per stack. Blessing of the Summer. Now transfers 12% of healing into damage and transfers 12% of damage into healing. Fading Light and Seal of Order now increases Blessing of Dawn effect by an additional 5%. Hammer Wrath damage increased by 50%, but its cooldown has also increased by 15 seconds. Or by 15 seconds, sorry. Awakening now requires 15 stacks to activate and increases the damage of Judgment by 40%. Tears Deliverance healing increased by 17% and now increases healing taken by 12%. Crusader's Might now reduces the cooldown of Judgment and Holy Shock by 2 seconds. Sanctify Wrath with Sanctify Wrath now decreases the cooldown of Holy Shock by 50% of its duration. Overflowing Light now converts 30% of Holy Shock increase or er, Overflowing Light now converts 30% of Holy Shock's healing into Absorb Shield. Strength of Conviction now increases the healing and damage of Holy Power Spenders by 5-10%. Moment of Compassion now increases the healing of Flash of Light by 50%. This does not apply to PvP. Saved by the Light now activates when Ally drops below 50% health. Does not apply to PvP. Power of Silver Hand now increases the healing of your next Holy Shock by 20% of all damage and effective healing done. Blessing of Summer, Autumn, Winter, and Spring are now off the global cooldown. They fixed an issue that caused versatility to increase the absorb amount of light of the Martyr. A few talents have changed their location, and Holy Infusion has been removed altogether. Uh, protector or Protection Paladin, all abilities Damage increased by 5, 15%. The damage reduction effect while standing in Consecrated, Consecrate of Mastery Divine Bulwark is reduced by 20%. Improved Holy Shield increases your chance to block spells by 8%. Sentinel's duration reduced to 16 seconds. Eye of Tears duration reduced to 6 seconds. Righteous Protector Holy Power abilities dam reduce cooldowns by 1.5 seconds. Word of Glory healing increased by up to 300% based on your missing health. Bulwark of Order now shields you for 60% of your Avenger shield damage. Retribution Paladins. This is the last one for Paladins. New Talent, Holy Flame, Divine Storm deals 10% increased damage. And when it hits an enemy affected by expurgation, uh, exp it spreads the effect to up to four targets hit the you deal three percent increase holy damage to targets burning from your expurgation crusaders or talent is no longer granted by default in the class tree for retribution greater judgment talent is now granted by default in the class tree for retribution consecrated blade is no longer a talent and now is learned at level 11. Word of Glory healing increased by 44%. Final Verdict damage reduced by 10%. Temple of Verdict damage reduced by 10%. Uh, Just Cars Vengeance damage reduced by 10% and now heals for 3% of maximum health. Hammer of Wrath damage reduced by 15%. Blade of, Do Blade of Justice damage reduced by 20%. Does not affect Blade of Vengeance. Blade of Vengeance damage increased by 25%. Expurgation damage Reduced by 10%. Divine Storm damage increased by 25%. Templar Star Strike damage increased by... Or, sorry. Templar Strike damage reduced by 10%. Templar Slash damage reduced by 10%. Crusading Strikes and Cru Crusader Strike damage both have been reduced by 10%. Blessed Champion now deals 25% damage 
or reduce damage to secondary targets and is now a one point talent. An issue causing Radiant Glory to not function with fast back to back procs has been resolved. They fix it, or the following talents are now two points. Uh, Heart of Crusader is Zealot's, Zealot's Fervor. Vanguard Justice has been removed. Imprian's Legacy moved to where Vanguard's Justice was on the talent tree. And Holy Flame is now in a choice node with Blade of Vengeance. Alright, we still have Priest, Rogue, Shaman. Oh my god. Warlocks. Warriors. We got so much. All right, on to priest. Yeah, this is getting a long, long fucking section. Priest flash healing increased by twenty percent. Power ward shield absorbed amount increased by twenty percent. Power ward life healing increased by twenty percent. Categorization shadows healing increased by sixty percent. Healing done by void shift to priest ally is now capped at twice the priest health. From darkness comes light. Now increases the healing of flash. Heal by 3% and now stacks up to 20%. Prayer of Mending is now removed from all allies except the last ally that received one from the priest when a raider or raid encounter begins. Uh, fix an issue causing Holy Nova to not benefit from Phantom Breach. Fix an issue causing Halo to damage enemies outside of combat. Update the visual animation for Void Ship. Fix an issue causing Divine Image Teleport to fail on transport. Added a counter to heal spell for tracking the status of Light Weaver. Follow, the following talents are now one point. Manipulation and Surge of Light. Discipline Priest. All healing is no longer reduced by 3%. All damage is increased by 5%. Holy Nova healing increased by 23%. Power Ward Shield Absorption increased by 30%. Power Ward Radiance healing increased by 10% and, has a cooldown uh, and its cooldown has been reduced to 20, 18 seconds. Pain transformation now heals for 15% of maximum health. Penance healing increased by 20%. Rapture cooldown now starts when pressed and it lasts up to 30 seconds. Bright Pupil now reduces the cooldown of Power Ward Radiance by 3 seconds. Abysmal Revere now increases Atonement healing from Shadow spells by 5% slash 10%. Fixing issue causing uh, Indemnity to not increase atonement duration by its intended amount. They also fixed an issue where atonement healing was only being increased by 50% outside raid instead of the intended 70%. The following talents are now only one point, uh, Contrition and Heaven's Wrath. Holy Priest, all damage increased by 10%. Healing, all, they didn't wear that one right. Healing, heal, Healing increased by 44%. Flash heal healing increased by 20%. Prayer of healing healing <laughs> increased by 30%. Circle of healing has been increased by 30%. Holy ward serenity healing has been increased by 20%. Divine image healing light spell healing increased by 20%. Healing course now increased the healing done by circle of healing by 3%. A lot of the word healing. Light Weaver now increases heal healing by 25%, fixing the issue causing the value of Gales of Songs to be incorrect, and Trail of Light is now only one point. Shadow Priest, all damage increased by 3%, Dark Ascension now increases non-periodic damage dealt by 20%, Mind Flay damage increased by 30%, Mind Flay Insanity now channels the same amount of damage over 1.5 seconds, Mind Flay Insanity and Mind Spike Insanity can now accumulate up to 4 charges. The overwrites for Mind Flay Insanity, Mind Spike Insanity now last 30 seconds. Mind Spike damage was increased by 50%. Uh, Mind Spike Insanity damage increased by 15%. Mind Spike Insanity now generates 12 Insanity. Mind Blast damage increased by 30%. Void Blast is unaffected by this change. Mind Melt now stacks up to 3 times. Uh, Mind Melt now increases the critical strike chance of Mind Blast by 30%. Oh my god. Mind Flay and Mind Seer from Idol of Thune now deals damage 10 times over the channel duration. They fix an issue causing Psychic Link not to always hit when near the max range of its effect. Fix an issue causing targeted versions of Shadow Crash to not follow the moving target. Fix an issue causing uh, Void Lashers and Void Tendrils from Idol of Cthune to fail to attack sometimes. They also fix 
uh, issue causing void lashes and void t void tendrils from idle Cthulhu to attack enemies. The priest is not in combat with. Divine Star no longer generates insanity when cast out of combat. Shadow Crash now refunds its insanity gain if it doesn't deal damage to any target when cast out of combat. All right, a couple more classes. I told you all this is gonna be a long one. We're almost at an hour. Uh, Rogue, cloaked in shadows, now creates a absorbed 18% of maximum health. Soothing Darkness now heals for 15% maximum health over duration. Uh, Recu Recuperator now triggers every 3 seconds. Gouge cooldown has been increased by 25 seconds. Or 2, 20, sorry. Cool Gouge cooldown has been increased to 25 seconds. Kidney shot cooldown has been increased to 30 seconds. Kidney shot duration has been increased to a maximum of 8 seconds. And this does not affect PvP. Um, assassination rogues. All ability damage increased by 14%. Auto attack damage increased by 20%. Venom damage increased by 10%. Crimson Tempest, Tempest damage increased by 19%. Venomous Wounds energy restores increased to 8. Poison Barbs visual will now begin to dissipate much faster to prevent covering up other important ground visuals. Outlaw Rogues. All ability damage increased by 20%. Auto attack damage increased by 20%. Sinister Strike damage increased by 10 Pistol Shot damage increased by 10%. Blade Flurry, Flurry increased damage by 50%. Killing Spree damage increased by 8%. Slight of Hand additional chance for Roll of Bones. Roll the Bones to grant multiple effects increased to 15%. Count the Odds chance to grant a Roll of Bones effect to 15%. Combat Potency now increases Energy Regeneration by 30%. And Ace Up Your Sleeve now grants 5 combo points when triggered. This charge or this change does not affect PvP combat. Though. Subtlety Rogues auto attack damage increased by 10%, along with eviscerate damage increased by 10%, black powder damage increased by 10%, and secret technique damage reduced by 6%. Then we have the shaman. How many more do we have? We have shaman and we have warlocks and warriors. So we got three more classes. Hang in there with me, I promise. Healing surge. Healing increase. Oh, I hate. Okay, healing surge increased by twenty percent. Stone bulwark totem now has a three minute cooldown, but its effect has been significantly increased. Wind rush totem and static field totems now cost one percent of mana, base mana. Uh, fix an issue causing stone bulwark totem to not be affected by dampening. Fix an issue of unnecessary sounds and animations from stone bulwark totem. Fix an issue causing Spirit Wolf to be removed and not continuing stacking after change of zones. Fix an issue causing Light Shield to be removed if another Shaman with Elemental Orbs or Elemental Orbit has an Earth Shield on its Shaman. Fix an issue causing Sky Fury buff to drop off after transferring zones and disconnecting. Earth Elemental Summons no longer resets the Swing Timer. Fix an issue causing Totem Totemic projection to fail on transport and lastly it fixed an issue causing spirit walkers grace to cancel lightning lasso when used right. elemental shamans lightning bolt damage increased by three percent thunder strike war damage increased by 150 percent earth shock damage increased by 25 percent icy fury increased by 80 percent earth and rage increased by 60 percent lava burst reduced by 25 percent lava beam reduced or er, lava beam increased by 10% elemental burst reduced by 25%, earthquake dam uh yeah, earthquake damage reduced by 6%, flame shock reduced by 15%, uh chain lightning increased by 10% uh along with greater lightning elemental increased by 200% chain lightning from greater lightning elemental now hits five targets. Call lightning one, two, three, four, five. Okay, there's five things on call lightning. Damage increased by 350%, while duration was increased to 20 seconds, cooldown increased to 20 seconds, and cast time reduced to 2 seconds. Call Lightning damage bonus is now 30%. Storm Elemental Tempest damage increased by 400%. Wind Gust damage increased by 400%. Light damage burst from Fury of the Storm increased by 200%. Splinter Elements now grants 10% haste. Power of Maelstrom now has a 6% chance to trigger Liquid Magma, Magma Totem. 
reduced by 30%. Also has a 30 second cooldown, additional lava burst from primordial waves. Now deals 50% of normal damage. Um, Surge of Power Lava Burst Benefit is now a 4 second cooldown reduction to elements. Echo of the Ele Elemental's Lesser Elements now deals 65% of the main element damage. I told you it's a long one. Thunderstrike Ward now has its own spell visual, an issue that Thunderstrike Ward dropping off has been fixed. Earthquake now triggers Storm Furies on cast only, an issue with Fusion of Element buffs from Ice Fury Override increase instead of casting has been fixed. Fusion of Elements buffs are now removed at the start of Raid Encounters, plus Mythic and Mythic Plus Dungeons. Fusion of Elements now only work with Damaging Nature spells. Storm Fur Frenzy is now on a personal resource display. Uh, they fix issues with Elemental Equilibrium that causes it to not function properly depending on which element you cast first. Along with Lava Surge, chance to trigger increase the Searing Flame is talented. Uh, these are all issues they fix, okay? Because I'm not reading that same word a thousand times. Issues fix Flash of Lightning to not reduce the cooldown of Stone Bowl Tournament and Primordial Wave. Elemental Blast from Fusion of Elements to consume Magma Chamber. Uh, issue causing Elemental Blast from Fusion of Elements to trigger Storm Frenzy. Issue causing Lava Beam to not benefit from Storm Frenzy. Issue causing Thunder Strike Ward not to trigger Lava Boom. Lava Beam. And they fix an issue causing Icy... Oh my god, there's so many. Cause Ice Fury or Aura to be hidden. It will now properly display as an Aura is on its personal resource display. Fix an issue causing Earthquake Overload damage to be higher than intended. Along with Storm Elements to ca not cast Call Lightning sometimes. Along with Primordial Bonds to sometimes persist through death. And to wrap it all up for the Elementals. Fix an issue causing several damage abilities to not be affected by elemental unity. Enhancement. I don't even know which. Shamans. There we go. Enhan Enhancement. Shamans. Elemental blast damage increased by 25%. Uh, Primordial wave is now 30 second cooldown. Primordial wave baseline passive buff lowered to 250%. Primordial wave now properly scales with the enhancement. Shamans mastery and elemental spirits. Element elemental damage buff. Doom Winds is now 60 second cooldown. Splinter Elements now grants 10% haste. Casting Flame Shock, Frost Shock, and Sundering will now initiate combat with melee auto attacks. Molten Assault range increased by 4 yards. Molten Assault now plays as now plays an impact visual on impacted targets. Crash Lightning range is increased by 4%. Uh, Crash Lightning is now on personal resource display. Earthen Weapon is no longer a personal resource display. Earthen Spirit, sorry, Elemental Spirit is no longer displayed either on personal resource display. Hellstorm is now displayed on personal resource display. Elemental Blast now correctly replaces Lava Burst and Spellbook. Fire and Ice now properly buff Primordial Wave. Nature's Fury now properly affects Primordial Wave. And the following talents are in or been decreased to one point molten assault improved maelstrom weapon and witch doctor's ancestries restoration all healing reduced by five percent not including pvp earth earthen wall totem increase earthen wall oh there's so much reading earthen wall totem health reduced by 40 percent torrent now increased riptide's initial healing by 20 percent and it's critical strike Rate by 10%. Riptide initial healing increased by 20%. Unleash life healing increased by 20%. Along with healing wave increased by 20%. Reactive warding increased by 70%. Ascendance now duplicates 70% of all healing. Ancestral guidance now transfers 2% of all healing into healing. What? Ancestral guidance now transfers 10% of all healing into healing. Ancestral Waking now heals 25% slash 50% of the amount healed. Earth Living Weapon heals over time duration of now 6 seconds and healing has been increased by 75%. Sprouting Spirits healing reduced by 
undulation now can be tracked through a counter on the healing wave and healing surge spell icon. Um, also can no longer trigger from additional healing waves from primordial wave. And now displays and highlights healing surge and healing waves when it's triggered instead of being consumed immediately. Tidebringer is no longer consumed if chain healing is cast when nature swiftness of or ancestral swiftness is activated. They fix three issues. Uh, issue that caused earth shield to sometimes be removed if another earth shield was present. Uh, also, issue that was causing queuing a lava burst after healing search to incorrectly consume master of elements when lava burst is insta cast. And lastly, fix an issue causing ancestral projection totem to not benefit from tomatic focus or oversized totems. Ooh, two more guys, two more classes. Warlocks, Demon Skin now creates a now creates an absorb for 0.12 slash 0.24 percent maximum health and may stack up to 5 slash 10 percent maximum health. Fix an issue where lifeblood was giving leech higher than the intended amount. Affliction warlocks, unstable affliction damage increased by 40 percent. Dark glare was increased by 55 percent. Soul rot was increased by 60 percent. Agony was increased by 40 percent. Uh, Melrific rapture increased by 20 percent. And they fix an issue where phantom singularity was not correctly applied infirmity to second targets along with fixing an issue where totem crescendo was not correctly checking if the target had unstable affliction corruption slash wither and agony and they fixed an issue where coal of the week was not correctly healing the damage of the first four targets damaged by malefic ra uh, rapture demonology warlocks this is what i play as uh, wild Imp damage increased by 15%. Demon Bolt increased by 55%. Demonic Core now has a 50% chance to grant Demonic Core when summoned Dread Stalkers Fade Away. When your Dread Stalkers Fade Away. There we go. They fixed three issues. Issue where Shadow Touch did not benefit Fail Seeker, Implosion, Gloom Slash, or Guillotine. Uh, fixed an issue where Demonic Brutality would not increase the critical strike damage of your demons, and they also fixed an issue where Impending Doom would not summon a wild imp when Doom expired. Lastly, for Warlocks, Destruction Warlocks, Chaos Bolt increased by 40%, Shadow Burn increased by 125%, Conflict Rate increased by 25%, Incinerate has been increased, decreased, sorry, Incinerate has decreased by 10%. Soul Fire has been increased by 5, Channel Damage Damage increased by 10%, along with uh, Damage Dealt to Nearby Enemies has been increased by 25%, Summon the Fural Damage increased by 10%, Reign of Fire increased by 35%, Pyro percent, sorry. Pyrogenics now increased damage taken from Fire Spells by 3%, Ritual Rune now activates after spending 20 Soul Shards, Avatar Destruction now generates 1 Soul Shard Fragment every second, Summon and Fural now generates one soul shard fragment for every second as well. They fixed three issues where power overwhelming overwhelming incorrectly gave 1% mastery instead of 0.5 mastery per sec. Issue where three sacks of power overwhelming were granted when using Reign of Fire while talented to Inferno. And lastly, they fixed an issue where Reign of Fire damage enemies or could damage enemies through wall. All right, warriors, last last class, and then we're we're literally almost done. The classes are what's taking up so much. Warrior shield slam damage increased by eight percent. Pain and gain now heals for two percent of your maximum health. Arms warriors mortal strike damage decreased by fifteen percent. Overpower de decreased by twenty percent. And stormwall now heals for five percent of maximum health. Fury warriors invigorating fury now heals for ten percent of maximum health. Protection warriors. Melee attacks and abilities damage increased by 30%. Revenge damage increased by 25%. Execute increased by 50%. Devastator increased by 25%. Shield charge, primary target damage increased by 25%. Ravager increased by 25%. Defensive stance, reduced damage taken by 16%. Fight through the flames causes defensive stance to reduce magic damage you take by 6%. Into the fray increased haste up to 8%. Punish reduce reduces damage enemies deal to you by 2%. Enduring electricity, alacrity, there we go, alacrity. Enduring alacrity increases stamina and armor by 8%. Indomitable increases your maximum health by 6% and heals you for 1% of your maximum health per 20 rage spent. 
Defenders Argus reduces shield wall cooldown by 60 seconds. Impenetrable wall, impenetrable wall causes shield slam to generate an additional four rage and reduces the remaining cooldown of shield wall by six seconds. Disrupting shout cooldown increased to 30, 90 seconds. And impending victory heals you for 20% of your maximum health. Boom! There's all the glasses. Oh my god. We just... We just... Yeah. Items. Uh, there's only two items. Cross Realm Guild Bank functioning now is now availability. I combined like three words there. Cross Realm Guild Bank functionality is now available. There we go. High Inquisitor, White Main, and Scarlet Monastery of Old now correctly drops loot. Um... Do 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 What's up? What's up? What's up? PV player versus player. I'm not gonna read all these classes because basically they've all been mentioned as um, earlier, just in different wording. So uh, for PvP, the stacking deserter debuff no show that is applied when leaving solo shuffle or back battleground blitz match. Has now applied account wide instead of character specific. Gladiator's distinction two set bonus has been adjusted. Damage dealer rolls now increase stamina by 5%. Healer rolls now increase stamina by 10%. And primary stat by 10%. Tank rolls now increase stamina by 5%. Right. We've already covered classes. Uh -oh. And there's nothing. They fix a lot of uh, interface and accessibilities, uh, such as issues that cause the X button to disappear during value added service process after running an error, um, character list not being organized properly, add on lists being disappearing, um, entering the world with a character that has gear update and a pop up will appear context about how to switch realms to receive update, uh, group finder got an update and improved readability. Oh my god. All right, to wrap up World of Warcraft, let's talk about the hot fixes. And this is just for, just for August 15th, I think is what they had. All right, August 13th. All right, on August 13th, Season of Discovery, the percentage increase of player's health that presented in Warsong Gulch and uh, Arathi Basin is now also active in Alterac Valley. Uh, for items, Shards of God Summon Minions now has a 20-yard cone and will spin the first three seconds of, of its summon to run into a range of target. The quest, Stave of Ancients, Demon NPCs will now respawn much more quickly. Druids, the bonus of Moonkin form that increases Moonfire and Sunfire periodic damage has been increased by 100%. Hunter and Im Immolation Trap now has a 75 duration second sorry seven and a half du second duration but still damage the same amount of damage over as it did over 15 seconds this allows it to deliver its damage before its cooldown is available again raptor fury now lasts 30 seconds and increases raptor strike damage by 15 percent per application mages arcane barrage now has its mana cost correctly reduced by clear casting and pyroblast from hot streaks will no longer consume clear casting paladins divine light now has eight second cooldown. Rose, main gauche will now correctly be consumed when you parry an attack regardless of the type of enemy you are fighting. Focus attacks now refund two energies from critical strikes. And in Venom, erroneous spell power ratio has been removed. And then for shamans, uh, shamastic rage now grants the rest of the party and raid 18% of the mana granted to the shaman. Warlocks, the Warlock Pets will now correctly benefit from Felt Armor's increase to Mastery Spell. And then on the 15th, to wrap this episode up, uh, Death Knights, Unholy Death Knights, fix an issue where Festering might not overlap. Uh, Retribution Paladins fix an issue causing Radiant Glory to trigger more than intended. For Fury Warriors, Wrath and Fury is now correctly increasing rage, Raging Blow Damage. For items, the blood tokens are now capped at 200,000 tokens. For professions, the Artisan Acuity Regent, Regent cost for rare and epic profession tools and accessories may now only be provided by the customer for crafting orders. Quest, Squally 
can now be summoned from your pet journal when Griffins of Feather is completed. For WoW Remix, Mist of Pandera, all players should be able to now see Mythic Ensemble Chronomancer. Mythic Ensemble Chronomancer. I'm butchering. Hold on. I'm going to get this right. Chill out with me. You've been here for an hour. It's fine. All players should be able to now see Mythic Ensemble Chronomancer for purchase from Pythagoras. Season of Discovery, the following spells will no longer incorrectly reset their cooldown after a boss is defeated. Uh, Feral Spirits for the Shaman, Icy Bands for Mage, Portal of Summoning for Warlocks, Berserk for Druid, Ancestral Guidance for Shaman, Hand of Sac Sacrifice for Paladins, Avenging Wrath for Paladins, Dispersion and uh, Homuncoli hum 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 for the Priest, Dispersion for the Priest, priest Eye of the Void for the Priest, Pain Suppression for the Priest, Shadow Fiend for the Priest, and Rage Regeneration for the Warrior. And lastly, for Season of Discovery, Mage, 100% crit chance, Fire Blast from Overheat will no longer count towards the Combustion 3 crit and will no longer increase the stacks of Combustion. <gasps> oh my god, that was so much shit. Uh, I did leave out the PvP classes and that was not, not technically not intentional. I had full intentions to cover it, um, but after reading through it, it's really just like, going over some of the stuff I've already or most of the stuff I've already covered uh, but if you want to see more about that all you have to go all you have to do is go to world of warcraft.blizzard.com and look for the updates for pvp and I'll also show you the hotfix as well with that said pass an hour just for world of warcraft alone uh, let's move on to the next game hopefully you're still here with us maybe you just skipped a section altogether regardless let's jump into the next game all right on the fortnite this is not going to take an hour so let's get into it fortnite chapter 5 season 4 battle pass all marvel skins free rewards and prices all right so fortnite ch uh, chapter 5 season 4 battle pass uh the fortnite absolute doom battle pass contains 14 pages worth of rewarding including skins and alternative variants wraps and emotes and more uh Lots of heavy, heavy marble. Uh, looks like you're going to get War Machine, Iron Patriot, uh, a Wolverine variant called Peel Vereen, the banana wearing a Wolverine suit. You also get that same one as the X-Force version, so it'll be a black suit with the red eyes. Uh, you'll get Emma Frost, the organic di diamond uh, Emma Frost as well. Captain America version of Captain Jones, and you'll get a stealth Captain Jones as well. Looks like we're getting Mysterio, two different versions. We're getting Shuri, taking the mantle, which is an emote. Black Queen, another Wolverine banana variant, um, using the classic brown and yellow. Another variant of Mysterio, Wakanda Royal Shuri variant. So there's a lot of freebies and it looks like the battle pass will end august or ends november 18th so it starts it starts today um, and you can get it for 950 b bucks so yeah it's gonna be going on for a few a few weeks a couple months there we go all over the place today after that world of warcraft one New weapons in Fortnite this season will be the Dual Micro SMG, War Machine's Arsenal, Marnock, Monarch's Pistol, Sovereign Shotgun. Um, these are the unvaulted weapons for this chapter and season. The unvaulted weapons are Doom's Arcane Gauntlets, Captain America's Shield, Striker Burst Rifle, Striker Assault Rifle, Combat Assault Rifle, Ranger Pistol, Hammer Pump Shotgun, Gatekeeper Shotgun, Hyper SMG, and Shockwave Grenade. And then these are these weapons are going into the vault. Heavy impact sniper, minigun, Magneto's power, combat shotgun, nitro fist, nitro cars, thunderburst SMG, tri beam laser rifle, Oscar's frenzy auto shotgun, hand cannon, conductor hand cannon, boom bolt, ringmaster scar boom bolt, uh, Megalo's dawn combat shot shotgun, and ringmaster's scar boom bolt. Ooh, that's a lot. 
That is a lot. Alright, and then... And yeah, it's just, let's see. There is something on here on how to get Doctor Doom. Oh, he's, yeah, you'll need, you'll have to purchase the Battle Pass to get Doctor Doom. All right, cool, cool. Yeah, not a whole lot to go off of Fortnite. It, like I said, it's going to be very quick and painless. Most of this is going to be World of Warcraft, but that's it. On to the next game. All right, next up is Overwatch 2. So a couple things, there's hero buffs and nerfs in Overwatch 2 Season 12, and this is what's been confirmed so far. Um, along with Battle Pass theme, Reaper Mythic, and all skins, and then the new mode called Clash. Let's get into it. Start off with hero buffs and nerfs in Season 12, uh, which, launch, which will launch August 20th, so here in a few days. It will also introduce a new support character called Juno, who is likely to be incredibly picked on day one. However, these tweaks to the existing roster will help decide the meta for who the best heroes are. Let's get into it. Hero changes so far. Life Weaver buff. Overwatch 2 players have felt that Life Weaver is too weak for some time now, and Season 12 is giving the support hero a long-awaited buff. The devs revealed that the pre-launch blog that they are planning notable updates to improve the quality of pedal platform and how it can be be used and counterplayed. And how it can be counterplayed. There we go. They also mentioned that Healing Blossom and Rejuvenation Dash will be on the receiving end of some changes. It wasn't confirmed exactly yet how they'll alter it, but the healing values of both abilities will likely be increased to better the, his survivability and make him more effective at keeping teammates alive. For mobile heroes... Mobile Hero nerfs. Season 11, we saw most matches dominated by more nimble characters that can easily get behind enemy lines and avoid fire. And the devs are addressing this by reducing the health of several he heroes. This will make them easier to take out and more of a risk to use now. It hasn't been announced which heroes will be targeted in this change, but both damage and support characters will be included. Uh, expect popular mobile options like Tracer, Sombra, and even Mercy to be handed a nerf but we'll have to wait to see further further notes from blizzard so not too bad get back into that again all right overwatch season uh overwatch 12 season 12 12 overwatch season 2 overwatch 2 season 12 how many times am i going to say this before you get it right let's get after it the theme of Season 12 is New Frontiers, as confirmed by the official Season 12 trailer that was just released a couple days ago. While the, the name may imply a space theme, this season will actually see a long-awaited Egyptian theme that Blizzard mentioned they wanted to work on back in 2023. The skins of the Battle Pass are themed around Nubis and Egyptian mythology, including the Mythic skin. Mythic skin and the other cosmetics in this season... Reaper is getting a mythic skin in season 12 called Anubis Reaper, and Anna will get a will be getting a mythic weapon skin. Mythic weapon skins are introduced for the first time in season 11 with Reinhardt Bound Demon Hammer, and you can use the weapon skin with any other skin. Um, in order to get these skins, you'll have to earn mythic prisms in the season 12 battle pass and then trade them in for skins of your choice. This can only be done through buying the battle pass, however which also a bunch of new skins for other heroes, such as Anna, Doomfist, Ilari, Ash, Sigma, will all get new skins as well. Um, the Battle Pass price is 1,000 Overwatch coins, or $10. 10 US dollars, or 8, do, uh, 8 pounds and 40 cents to purchase during the titles. Or doing this entitles you all 80 items to be included in the Battle Pass, as long as you manage to earn enough before Season 13 arrived. Uh, there is also a premium version that will cost you 2,200 Overwatch coins or $20 slash 16 pounds and 79 cents, which comes out with, which will come with 20 free tier skips and a 20% XP boost that lasts for the remainder of the season. So you have that. And then lastly, the new mode is called Clash. Uh, Clash was actually announced as a permanent mode 
in the Overwatch 2 Season 2. Season 12 trailer. I won't mess up again. It's a completely new core game mode and it works as a combination of 2 CP and control. So, Overwatch, here, here's the mode explained, okay? Clash is a new game mode in Overwatch 2 where players are tasked with capturing points from the enemy's team in order to win. The mode is much faster paced experience than other players, or sorry, than others that are currently in the game. Mostly because you capture the, as you capture points, your spawns are consistently changing and the map rotates are more streamlined than hybrid, for example. Uh, this is how you'll play. Clash is a PvP game mode with five capture points, A through E, placed in a straight line on a mirrored map. Only one of these capture points is activated at a time. The match starts with a mid-map capture point, C. The two teams will fight for this capture point to progress to the next Getting closer, deeper, and deeper into the enemy's territory with each point captured. You can capture a point by simply standing on it uncontested. The first team to make it all the way to A or E, sorry, all the way A slash E, or capture the most points by the end of the match will win. Um, clash maps. The first two clash maps released are Hanakoa and Throne of Anubis. Both were inspired the old by old Overwatch 2 CP maps, respectfully. Um, and it was mentioned during BlizzCon, so, hold on, oh, there we go, I overlooked something, Volskaya was also mentioned during BlizzCon as a pop possible location as well, we'll see new Clash maps come out, possibly through Season 12, but for sure in the future season, um, Season 12 will also see more content, uh, in the Battle Prep. Battle Pass, I can't speak. And it's looking like there will be a big crossover event with World of Warcraft. As usual, a few heroes are going to receive some buffs and nerfs, as I mentioned before. Uh, so stay up to date with that. And kind of the best ways, again, like and subscribe. It's free. Turn that bell icon on so you get notified when things get posted. Onward to the last game, and then we are done. All right, the last game up on the docket is Phasmophobia, as they just released a big update a couple days ago. So let's get into it. It's quite simple. Vivox, the multiplayer voice chat system has been changed from Photon Voice to uh, Vivox. Voice recognition is unaffected by these changes. However, this new system has higher quality of audio, support for a wider range of microphones and headphones, echo cancellation, noise suppression, fix an issue where the ghost can't hear you during single player games, and global chat will no longer suddenly stop working. So this is good news because as we mentioned in I think week 31, 30, 31, one of those two, uh, this is coming to consoles this October and they don't or they didn't currently have the voice system down so where we can chat with each other. So this is a uh, this is good. This is amazing. We love this. Maybe Rob and I can finally fucking play this together. New items. Two photos can now be removed from the journal. You cannot remove a three-star photo, though. While in multiplayer games, players will vote on whether a photo should be removed or stay. And the UI has been added to the photo journal to show the amount of photos removal available. Note, this is a temporary fix to alleviate many issues players have had with the photo system. This will be adjusted further in upcoming major photo rework updates. Oh my god, thank god. That, that always annoyed me. Alright, changes. The lantern room has been split into different ghost rooms to avoid confusion and fix sense replacement. Lantern room top and lantern room bottom. They remove a B haptic support, improve player movements to help it feel much smoother and experience less stuttering. Head bob now only bobs when you are moving wheelchairs will no longer be pushed when when interacting with a new interaction will be added to these wheelchairs for in further development the fuse box on point hope will now only spawn in the entry house kitchen game room and master bedroom floors lower the volume of tanglewood landline phone interaction and lower the volume of the air ball ghost event oh good those were loud as hell here are the many, 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 many fixes. Let's get into it. 
Dots 3 light will no longer stop emitting when placed in certain areas. The sound sensor icon will now face the correct direction on the minimap. The lighthouse tent door in Point Hope is no longer visible when viewed through parabolic glass. Adjusted the broken fuse box spark to stop them from going through the floor. You can no longer walk up the broom in Point Hope maintenance room. Phantoms will no longer disappear when taking a photo of them with a full journal. Ooh. So the importance of keeping a, a entry available right there. Several plates now have more accurate collision. Moved some assets to stop players from getting stuck behind fire gate and point hope game room. Players will no longer jitter when they are going up top level stairs to point hope. Players will no longer get stuck in traveling down the inside of top level stairs and point hope. Sorry, I had to look at the time. Fix the rendering. Uh, Artifacts on Point Hope upstairs door, and it's now possible for VR players to acquire the Ferryman badge. You can now print sprint when you die if your sprint set setting is set to off. Players can no longer climb certain objects when traveling traversing staircases. You can now archive the poltergeist or achieve sorry, you can now achieve the poltergeist and revenant achievement with a mimic. The Banshee's ability use stat will now only count if the Banshee reaches a player's position during its targeted wander. Shades will no longer consistently work as intended when players leave the room. Uh, Boreos will now give dots evidence correctly when there are no players in the same room as the ghost. The Spear Box will provide evidence more consistently when the ghost only responds to alone players. Ghost, will no, ghost events will no longer occur with no one in the location. When using a gamepad, you will no longer buy or and sell items in the shop unintentionally at the same time as enabling slash disabling slash resetting your loadout. The VR teleport stamina visual will now display correctly. If your ID badge gets removed during it not being unlocked, you no longer have you no longer have to select a new role to be able to play the game. Improve the spawn position of the bones and point hope blocking and I wish to see the ghost. Hunt with a tier 3 crucifix will no longer leave the player who wish permanently blind. The VR loading screen will now fade to black correctly when loading training. You can now place video cameras consistently on tripods and VR and banshees entering their dot states will no longer increase ability use stats. <clears throat> There's so much more coming soon. So, uh, I'm excited for this. It looks like we're, we're gearing up for the crossover to finally happen and I'm so excited. But also October is like new Call of Duty. So with this, let's wrap this episode up. Alrighty, everyone, we're going to make this a very short and quick wrap up. Thanks so much for tuning in. If you made it all this way through, again, we covered a maximum amount of one hour plus of World of Warcraft. We covered Fortnite. We covered Overwatch 2 and we covered Phasmophobia. Uh, if there is a video game that you'd like us to cover on a weekly basis or even bi-weekly basis, let us know in the comments down below. If you enjoy this type of stuff, like and subscribe. Make sure you turn the bell icon on as well to hit get notifications. Uh, other than that, tune in for our audio podcast everywhere you get podcasts, including here on YouTube as well. Uh, so with that said, thank you so much. Go check out shellshockcbd.com and save yourself 10% or more with promo code CMSIG. That's Charlie Mike sig okay sig so charlie mike and then sig mike uh, so go check it out save 10 percent and live a better life healthier life with um, all their products whether it's honey whether it's uh oils and bath salts or treats for your dog cats go check it out otherwise i'll see you on the next weekly update week 34. till then everyone take care stay safe stay healthy and we'll see you take it easy